Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Nature Angel and if you are new here, I try to talk about things that are related to school psychology because this is my first year as a school psychologist. But let's get right into it and today we are going to be talking about the differences between an initial evaluation, a re-evaluation, and an IEP. Sometimes this can get a little tricky um, either to explain or maybe you're in school and you're trying to learn the differences right now of the three because when you're a school psych you hear these terms being thrown around and it's something that you want to know and the sooner you learn it the easier it is so let's just get started so with an initial evaluation this is what you need for special education services so an initial evaluation is done before you can give a student special education for disability under these categories, which I will try to put probably over here. As a school site, if we find, as a team, including the school psychologist, if we find the child eligible, then we could say, okay, this kid has a disability under this category, and then they will be able to receive special education services for that disability. With an initial evaluation, parents can request it or teachers can request it. So let's say that a student isn't doing too well in class. You wanna make sure that you tried interventions and things like that before bringing it to the team because if you try an intervention and it works, then it's not a special education case. You know what I mean? Like it's not a disability that the kid has. Um, there are also certain things that you have to be aware of, like if English isn't a student's first language, you can't say they have a disability if they're doing bad and you're teaching everything in English and they barely know any English because they could know exactly what it is, but you're teaching it in a language they don't know. So there's things like that that you have to be aware of. But all of this, um, if you already know that English isn't the first language, if um, you've tried other things in the past, and if this is happening and it's not due to some other circumstance, then you know we might decide as a team to move forward and test the kid, do a whole evaluation. In our district, if you decide to evaluate, so for the federal timeline, you have 60 days. For our state timeline in Virginia, you have 45 days from the time that you said you would evaluate a kid. Now, those 45 days do not stop because of holidays or snow days. So the time keeps rolling. And that's why I always say like, you know, I, I'm trying to drill it into your head. <laughs> if you can do it as quick as possible because you never know like if the kid's out, if for some reason the school's closed, um, or anything could happen. So it's just easier to try to get it done or at least started as soon as you can. I try to do them as soon as I get parents permission. That's the other thing, you need parents consent in order to even evaluate the kid. So the evaluations usually, um, if it's a full evaluation, if it's an initial evaluation, will usually include the cognitive and achievement testing from the school psychologist. Now, at my school, um, I also give the rating skills to the teachers. And, you know, I can interview the teachers, but I find the rating skills to be the easiest. And then with the student, if the student's old enough, I'll also do an interview with the student as well, get a little feedback for that. Now, I do not work with the parents. When I was in my internship in Pennsylvania, I did do the parents portion. For us, the social workers do that. And um, so that's another part. They talk to the parents, usually get the social history, like a whole background from when the kid was born, like the pregnancy, growing up, um, if there's any delays, all of that stuff. You also um, might get a speech pathologist to test the student, depending on that. You might do a hearing screening. Um, you might do a vision because you do have to rule out vision. Like if a kid can't see or hear, can't say they have 
um, a disability because they might be able to learn. It's just, oh, they can't see the board or, oh, they can't even hear what you're saying. So how are they going to know? So all of that is what is included in an initial um, evaluation, typically. And like I said, for us, I do the cognitive and achievement and the rating skills. Depending on the state and your school, the school psychologist might do something different. Like I've heard stories of um, the school psychologist only doing a cognitive and achievement and like no rating skills or talking to the teachers or anything. So it really depends, but that's how my district runs things. So a reevaluation, there is a three year review, the triennial, and that's required by law. So if a student has services in place, every three years you have to reevaluate the student and make sure that, okay, is their placement good? Do we need to make any changes? So that's one type. A parent or a teacher can also request a student to be reevaluated again if they feel like services um, aren't working or they think something needs to change sooner. And I actually had a couple of parents, like actually, I think I have one this week coming up where they want their kids to be reevaluated even though it's before the three years. Um, and that makes sense, especially let's say that maybe they moved states or schools things change so they might want things to be done differently or maybe they notice there's changes and that could be due to a bunch of things but that is you know something that would or could cause a parent or a teacher to be like hey <laughs> we might need to reevaluate this kid sooner because you don't want them to fall behind and three years is a long time but if you do a reevaluation what we do is we choose components so maybe we don't choose any maybe the kid we're like everything's working and they seem to be doing better so we're going to keep everything in place maybe there's certain things that they haven't been tested in a long time so we want to pick certain little things like i know we had a couple of kids that were reevaluations, and we only did like the social history or an observation in class just so we get a little information and especially if they're still doing like however they're like let's say they're doing well in school testing the kid probably won't change like usually usually test scores tend to stay the same but if a kid was like tested in kindergarten and now they're in eighth grade and they're not doing well well then yeah you know we might want to update their cognitive and achievement and sometimes you might only want to update the achievement or just the cognitive like I know there were some kids that transferred I looked at their old reports and they only had a cognitive and not an achievement so I just updated their achievement or they had a cognitive and an achievement but it seemed like it happened a long time ago I want to see how they're doing in their classes let's just give them the achievement portion see where their strengths and weaknesses are that's a reevaluation so you might end up doing all the components again if you really think that the kid like has all these changes and you want to see what's different or you might just pick and choose a little or you might choose none and just keep going with the services you can also decide to you know end their services if as a team <laughs> if everything seems to be going well and maybe at this point it seems like the services might actually be hindering them so all of that's what happens in a reevaluation so IEP is the individualized education plan and usually the school psychologist is not involved in the IEP I wasn't involved in it in PA um, I'm not involved in it here in Virginia and once a kid is found eligible what happens is I think they have about 30 calendar days to figure out what the IEP will be for the student so then the team meets for that but like I said for us um, at school psychs I don't have anything to do with the IEP like I don't go to the IEP meetings or do anything for that also once a year they come back as a team to meet for the IEP to make sure that everything is okay that's in place see if there's any changes that need to be made so that's a yearly annual review all right so I hope this video was really helpful and I know these things can get a little confusing so if there are questions that you have or maybe there is something that I didn't project clearly please leave that below in the comments because someone else might also feel the same way and I'll try to explain myself better um, if you guys want resources or anything let me know I can also put that down below but I appreciate you so 
so so much for watching and i thank you so much i really do appreciate it and i hope that you guys have the best rest of your day week and all of that <laughs> see you later guys bye